1990, before Red Man had a deal, and before Biggie had a deal, and before I was on the radio, we would play the club circuit together. They didn't have songs, they used to do freestyles. And we would just move, like, you know, it wasn't mainstream yet, so if you could put a thousand people, people would hire you. So, Red Man, Biggie, Naughty by Nature, Onyx, um, I mean, you name it, anything, uh, Tribe Called Quest, all those things at the time, I was coming up with them. And when the bad boy era, you know, I don't know if people are familiar with Craig Mack, rest in peace, but you know, I don't know if you're familiar with the song Flavor in Your Ear. But that was prob. I'm gonna tell you something, and I don't know who's ever gonna do the story, but Flavor in Your Ear is the most important single record of the 90s because it ushered in another era. It ushered in, um, before Flavor in Your Ear, it was Wu-Tang, it was uh, 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 Trap Call Quest, all these artists, but it was grimy. It was grimy hip hop. And, huh? What about Snoop? Snoop, where was Snoop at the time? 94. Um, well, my, mind you, all the shit I'm naming, Dre and Snoop are the king. We were all fighting in New York for second place. That was that was the that was the bar. But if you listen to that album, it is kind of grimy. The singles was polished, but the album was grimy. So when I, my first, I mean, I'm gonna be honest, man. Onyx and 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 Naughty by Nature, I, we were someplace, and niggas was like. You playing that whack shit, you playing that bullshit, that, that pop shit. Who's saying this? The artists themselves? The artists. The artists was like, and they was like, I they was all standing over there, nobody's talking to me. So I was like, I'm like, I I keep it a thousand with you, man. I cried that night. My feelings was hurt because I came up with them. And I'm thinking they're gonna adapt to the program and start making the shit that these niggas is making. But they never picked up the ball, and I don't want to say pick up the ball, because I want to be specific what I'm saying. That was the beginning of me learning some artists are great and they're going to be great, but they just have their amount of time and that's it. Oh, they, they, go, they made two albums, four albums, but that's it. I don't use it as fall off. I use it at, I learned that time is that niggas just have their time. And to be honest, a lot of DJs that were huge at the time did not want to adapt to the bad boy Snoop era. They wanted to stay gritty. They wanted to stay Nas. They wanted to stay Tribe Call Quest and everything. But what they missed was MTV, Hot 97, a station in DC called PGC, PAL 106. There was this thing called The Box right where you could pay for whatever video you wanted to see and whatever you, if you called 10 times the, the video played 10 times i used to watch that channel because if somebody's putting their own hard on money to see a video you know where the game's going and they didn't want to accept it and to be honest i made that decision then that was first amongst 10 different decisions that i made i made that decision i want to climb into the new era and that was the new era at the time. That was 94, what time of year Flavor Year came out? 94. 94, before that it was backpacks, gritty, coming to club, where you, and the, the weed, no champagne, niggas was drinking Long Island iced teas, and that was it. Puff came in the game, now the clubs are selling out of the bottles of the liquor because they putting it in the videos. Now the clubs is packed, and now the girls like it. That, you know, it, it, it evolved. And that's the part, they hurt my feelings, and we've become better. 
I remember being at a Wu Tang concert. Is that, is that the point where you said, screw the artists, I don't need them. I gotta be bigger than them. One more incident happened. Go ahead. I was playing at a Wu Tang concert, Summer Jam. I'm setting up my shit. I don't remember what album they had. One of the niggas in the Wu Tang Clan, his main members, threw a battery at me. The battery whisked by my head, the big joint, not the little joint, the big one. And I didn't move, I stayed, I still played, a D battery, bro. <laughs> but what I knew was, is, I get it, that's the way y'all feel, and that's the way y'all feel about me now, which is cool. Because what I learned about artists is, ain't one artist ever come up to me and said, yo, Flex, that last album I did, it was trash, right? It was bad. Nigga was bad and ain't sell, right, nigga? <laughs> you mad, you, but you were mad at me at the time. But your shit ended up not selling anyway. What do you think? I pulled it up bullhorn and told niggas not to buy it? <laughs> you didn't want it. But then that's when they come around and we, we can have good dialogue after that. You know, because I'm going to keep it a thousand. A lot of artists that hated my guts and, and never supported me, them niggas had hot albums, them niggas brick. Now they retro, and I'm still here. And sometimes I play in the retro clubs like, what up, buddy? <laughs> I'm still hot. <laughs>